Epigenetics is the study of uh, variations in the way the DNA is structured that can determine which genes are expressed and which genes are not. So as the word epigenetics means, epi means above and genetics means the genome, the DNA. So epigenetics is sort of another layer of regulation on top of the genes that we already have. So um, the way the epigenetics works is we have our DNA and our DNA is wrapped around histone proteins. So these are structural proteins that help coil the DNA and help give it structure and we, we see evidence of this when we have the chromosomes completely compacted right before meiosis or mitosis before cell division we have the chromosomes compacted around these structural proteins. But these proteins remain there even when the chromosome is expanded, even when the DNA is no longer compacted, those histone proteins are there. But they can be in different configurations. So we have them here where the histones are heavily packed, they're, they're compacted, not as compacted as here, but they're still heavily compacted to the point where the genes, this is the section of the DNA that is coding for a gene, is shielded inside of those histone proteins so that it cannot be accessed for gene expression. Therefore, even though this gene is present here, it will not get expressed because the proteins that need to get to that gene and transcribe it are not able to get to it. On the other hand, if the histone proteins are loose, now the gene is exposed so that the gene is accessible for gene, uh, gene expression so that the proteins that transcribe it, like RNA polymerase, can now reach to it and transcribe it so that the gene can be expressed. So the reason why epigenetics is called above the genome is because here, even though you have the gene, you have the gene present, it is not being expressed. So it's the same as having it absent. And epigenetics is one of the most important ways of regulating gene expression in, in multicellular organisms. So why our cells, if you think of all the cells in your body, they all have exactly the same DNA, but they look very different because they are expressing very different genes. And a big part of that is because genes have different epigenetic marks in the different cells. So like we said, epigenetic marks can make the DNA less accessible. So usually that is, for example, having a methyl group added to the DNA makes the histones pack more tightly. And the other type common is having acetyls added to the histones so that they make them more loose, so now the, the genes are more accessible. What is incredible about epigenetics is, so far we've been talking about our genes and, and pretty much the only determinant of our genes is the genes that were present in our parents and which combination of the genes in our parents we received. But epigenetics provides a way for the genes we express to be modulated by the environment. So epigenetic marks respond very heavily to the environment, although they can also be passed on generation after generation, which makes them even more interesting. So things like good habits, such as exercise or lack of it, will affect our epigenetic marks and would affect the way our genes are expressed. Nutrition, what we eat, the environment, which contaminants do we use, do we put in our bodies, how relaxed or stressed we live. All those things are affecting our epigenetic marks. So our cells and our genes are responding to the, our lifestyle habits. And this, this, is, this is a very powerful thing to understand because everything that we're doing to ourselves, to our bodies, we are affecting the way our genes are expressed. And more important than that is that those tags can then be passed on to the next generation. So my own habits can then affect the, uh, the genes in my offspring. The things that I'm doing today can affect those epigenetic marks that I will pass on to my offspring. However, keep in mind that these are tags that are added to the DNA, so the DNA hasn't changed at all. The DNA sequence is exactly the same. The genes haven't changed. What has changed are those tags that either allow or prevent those genes from being expressed. Genomic imprinting is similar to epigenetics because it is 
is an addition, a tag that is added to the genes, and it's not a modification of the DNA per se, but it's, an, it's affecting which genes get expressed. And, and what is interesting is that imprinting depends on which parent does the imprinting. So there is a maternal imprinting that silences certain genes, and there is paternal imprinting that silences other types of genes. So maternal imprinting would add epigenetic marks to the egg, and paternal imprinting would add epigenetic marks to the sperm. If, uh, so that means that those genes that are silenced on the father's side will have to be expressed from the genes that are present on the mother's side, and vice versa. So the genes that are silenced in the egg then will be only expressed from the ones coming from the sperm. And this seems to have originated from the battle of the sexes. So for the mother, it is beneficiary to have the baby develop quickly as possible so that she can have the baby and then be ready to have another one. From the paternal perspective, it would be beneficiary to have the baby develop for as long as possible so that the baby will take as many resources from the mother as possible and grow as big as the baby can be so that the father can ensure that the baby will be the healthiest. And what they've seen is when, when you take out the maternal imprinting, then so you just leave the genes that were not shut off from the father, the baby would grow and the, the fetus actually doesn't quite reach development because it keeps growing without really forming into a baby. So the, the genes that, that are expressed from the father's side are to promote the growth of the baby. On the other hand, if you take out the, the um, imprinted genes from the mother, so you just, you just let the um, genes that are, sorry, the, the genes that are on and um, from the mother, now the baby will develop so quickly that it won't again turn into an actual viable fetus. So let's see here again. So what, what imprinting means is that the sperm comes with certain genes that are imprinted so that they are shut off. So for example, this gene will promote the fetus to develop quickly and the, those genes are silenced on the sperm so that the only information to develop quickly is coming from the mother. On the other hand, this let's say this gene is to um, for the baby to grow as much as possible. And that is silence in the mother side, so in the egg is silence, but it's present in the sperm and it's not silence. So this this allele would then promote the baby to grow more. And that, that compensates each other because now you only have expressions on one side and they sort of compensate. If you have a baby that is the combination of two eggs, then that baby would only have epigenetic marks from the female side, so that baby will not, will not have this gene that would promote its growth. If you have a baby that is the combination of two sperm, he will not have this gene that would promote an accelerated development, so the baby would just grow with no actual development plan. I encourage you to check out this video. I also posted it on Blackboard where you can have more information about what genomic imprinting is.